Good evening. I am happy to welcome you to another Anupali program to talk about the latest developments in government and bring you up to date on the progressive policies we are implementing on your behalf. It has been truly a rewarding week as we continued to create avenues for people to build better lives and lift themselves out of dependence. As Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, it has brought me great joy and satisfaction to launch two facilities at the aid bank, which will create significant economic opportunity for Dominicans of all walks of life in every part of the island. The two policies are designed to boost business activity and provide beneficiaries with the means to improve their, their personal circumstances and contribute to national development. The measures are what this is known for and how we have always excelled, that is, in the care of our vulnerable citizens, who are the most in need of assistance to move to self-sufficiency and success. The $27 million small and medium enterprises loan facility is offered to entrepreneurs wishing to expand and strengthen their businesses, especially in light of the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their finances. It will empower our entrepreneurs to carve the niche in the marketplace and build financial wealth and more secure futures for their families. Likewise, the Calanago Development Fund was developed to give our indigenous people a better shot at success. It provides access to financing at very concessionary terms to fund development projects in a number of areas including residential and commercial development, cultural development, enterprise development, crop production, and processing. The launch of this facility speaks to the dedication of this government to the well-being and security of the Kanalago people. Once again, I wish to, to assure the Kanalago people, and indeed all Dominicans, of our absolute commitment to the creation of opportunity to enhance and that of your families. I know there are some questions swirling in the public about the application process and the requirements to access the funds. I've invited the general manager of the aid bank, Ms. Marie Therese Johnson, to provide us with some more detail about the two loan facilities at the aid bank. Ms. Johnson, good evening and welcome to Anupali. Good evening, Honorable Prime Minister. The, the bank must be buzzing these days with, with um, inquiries. Now, so welcome. Let us go straight into the discussion. Um, let's first talk about the micro, small, and medium enterprises, the MSMEs uh, loan facility. Who can benefit from this facility? Okay, so Honorable PM, I would first of all like to welcome and to say good evening to everyone joining us on this program via the various social media platforms. And I would like to say thanks to the, uh, for the opportunity to, to discuss and collaborate with on, on the partnerships that we've had at Bufatam between government and the aid bank. Um, thanks for the continued confidence that is being placed in us in able to, to disburse these, these funds. And it's truly exciting times for us. Um, because we recognize that the injection of these funds will, will impact, positively impact the lives of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Dominica. So the micro, small and medium size, as, it, as the name suggests, is catered to businesses involved in commercial activity with annual turnover of less than $2,016,150. Um, businesses must be ready for social security and the Inland Revenue um, Division. Persons must be citizens of the Commonwealth of Dominica and they, they are required to show proof of their citizenship. Or they must be permanent, resident, permanent residents operating in Dominica for over 10 years. So, so you don't need to, your business don't need to be operating for 10 years as a Dominican? To apply no no because no. that's a that's a lot of public so you it, the, the 10 years only apply to permanent residents that is correct uh, and of course we don't want them to run for money um <laughs> so we had we had to put this in there now i i, I want us to be 
I want us to, to, to very clearly outline the requirements for qualification for funds under this facility. Because people don't know whether I qualify okay. uh, to, to apply. Okay, so the documentation which is required would depend on the nature of the business and the purpose of the funding. So let us take, for example, we have a farmer who is um, requesting funds for crop cultivation. We would request a, a recommendation from the agricultural extension officer the usual know your customer documentation and when we say know your customer documentation we mean proof of um, id proof of address um, and when we say proof of address it could be a utility bill or a letter from the village council or a letter from your landlord that reside and um, would require invoices obviously for the items that are being purchased financial information to include credit reports bank statements and a secured payment arrangement needs to be established. And when we say secured payment arrangement, we mean a standing deduction or an assignment of monies owed under various contracts. Okay, so very simple yes. uh, requirements. Yes, yes, yes. And so they will not be the back and forth in the bank, no? No, okay. definitely not. All right. <laughs> now, the, the other question is, what about um, the type of security that's needed, though? Okay, so security will also be based on the amount. For the MSME facility, the, the, the amounts are between 8,100 EC dollars to 675,000 EC dollars. So if we have someone applying between $8,000 and $15,000, a secured payment arrangement only will be required. And as I said before, a secured payment would be a standing order over an existing account salary deduction or an assignment of money's owed. If you're looking at larger loan sizes, um, let's say between 250000 to 675000 more tangible security would be required. So for example, a certificate of title, um, bill of sale, okay. if okay. someone is purchasing equipment, just to give an example. And is a deposit required to get approved for the no. sum? Which is Ca no, cash is not a prerequisite for the approval. However, should a client have a security shortfall, then yeah. that would be considered. Okay, so you do you do not need a cash um, sum no. deposited. No. no, it's not a requirement. Except if it was another shortfall. That is correct. No, no. I, I've seen on, on Facebook people asking um, because people people asking how much how much can I apply for? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So <laughs> what is the minimum maximum amount okay. the applicants can request? Okay, so the minimum eight thousand one hundred. That's under the MSME line. Mm -hmm. and maximum 675,000, and these are, that's easy dollars. Um, consideration may be given to larger amounts on a case-by-case -case basis. So, so from $800,100 to $675,000. That's correct. And, and on the special considerations, the six seventy five can be more. That's correct. OK. Yes. And, and the other question that people are asking on Facebook, because it's, that's where a lot of questions <laughs> have been asked, um, can a business apply for funds under the facility more than once? Yes, they could. However, uh, yes, they could. However, it would be, it would be, we would prefer if the facility is allowed to run for at least six months so that mm. we can monitor the facility before we give um, okay. new funds. All right. So the person, you can apply, you can apply, but for a second amount, but you have to be in operate, you have to be to show the money being used um, for over six months period. That is okay. Now. Now, to qualify, an applicant needs to be registered with the DSS and the Inland Revenue Division. Mm -hmm. I am certain that there are many um, small businesses which do not meet uh, this requirement. Uh, would you advise that they can register with these two entities and then apply for funding? Yes, they should because this is actually a requirement of the facility. And um, yeah, so we, we encourage, we advocate that persons need to register with the Dominica Social Security and the Inland Revenue. Mm. Now, and, and are you aware of, the, of what is needed to register the DSS and, and the Inland Revenue Division? So based on the Social Security Act, self-employed persons must apply for registration with a registration as an insured person. So they must ordinarily reside in Dominica. They must be between the ages of 16 and the retirement age and be engaged in employment in Dominica. To register a self-employed person needs to have the original copies of their birth certificate 
um, if, you are, if the person is married, they would need to present a marriage certificate and evidence of income um, being earned from that business. Okay. That's for okay. um, social security. Social security. Yes, yes. social security. With respect to inland revenue, before businesses commence operation and to comply with the laws of the Commonwealth of Dominica, the inland revenue must be contacted um, on what information is required. The first obligation, however, however, is to register the business by completing a, a registration form. Okay. Now, what are the terms of, for lending or um, for the small business loan facility? So the, the small business facility, as I said before, it ranges from $8,100 to 675000 The interest rate, very attractive interest rate, at the repayment term will be 120 months or 10 years, and that is exclusive of a six-month grace period. Mm -hmm. And the grace period will be on interest and principal. So for six months, the client pays nothing. Okay. And that gives the client some breathing uh, to make his money um, turn, as, as we say. Yes. And, um, <laughs> My, my advice to, to all of you is that you, you set aside an amount each month within that six months as if you were paying. That is correct. You know, so it's important that we treat it that way. <laughs> now, the Catalogue Development Fund has similar concession terms. What are the terms of the, the lending under the KDF? Okay, so the Calinago Development Fund, as we are aware, was set up to assist the Calinagos. And by Calinagos, we carry FUNA, the males or the Carinas, the females, and I learned that from Kose, from, from, <laughs> from, from the, minister, the good minister, um, when he did his presentation. So the government has set aside an, an amount of $860,000, specifically targeted to, to the, the Kalinago territory. The interest rate will be 2% on a reducing balance, and for 10 years, a maximum of up to 10 years, or 120 months, and grace period of six months on interest and principal as well. And, and who can qualify for the fund? Uh, that does the KDF. To qualify, uh, the, the, the applicant must be of Kalinago ancestry. And the project and the whatever infrastructure is being, is being developed must be geographically located in the Kalinago territory. The business must register with Social Security and Inland Revenue, and the owners of the business must be citizens of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Um, no. What is it intended for? What, what can the people use the monies for? Well, this is a facility like none other, because it is um, it's take tailored to all sectors and all loan purposes. So, for example, agriculture, industry, consumer, and by consumer we mean if you want to purchase a vehicle, meet medical expenses, miscellaneous expenses, mm -hmm. Tourism, housing, education. So there's a wide range of wide range, wide range of areas. Yes. Yeah. Now, someone someone sent me a WhatsApp some time ago, and mm -hmm. after we launched this on Wednesday, they said they, they said to me the Canago people have faced um, difficulty accessing financing from banks and credit unions uh, due to lack of collateral in the form of land titles, obviously because of the communal ownership. So the person asking, how is this facility different from what obtains at a commercial bank? Okay, so th this facility is distinct from, from anything that you will find in a commercial or commercial banking space or at a credit union. Mm -hmm. and first of all, the terms are excellent. You have 2% compared to as much as 15% which you could, which you could attract at the, at the um, commercial banks or, or the credit unions. <laughs> there are very flexible security options. There's absolutely no tangible security required. So what the Kalinago needs to present is a secured payment arrangement. And as I said before, the secured payment arrangement can be a standing order um, on an existing account, a salary deduction, or an assignment of contract sales. Um, sales. There's also the grace period of six months, which as far as I'm aware is not available anywhere else on the island. Six months interest and principal, I don't think that's available. So, so basically, if someone applies of, let's say, $15,000 um, under a term of 10 years, they will be paying just $138.02. Wow. So that, that is not available so I can, I can, I can I can see that there may be quite a few Dominicans who might be trying to um, straighten their hair um, <laughs> to, to declare themselves as Calinago. <laughs> uh, but you will have to be resident in the Calinago Territory, and the, invest, the investment must be done in the Calinago Territory. That is correct. So people like me, um, for me to get out to go and stay in the Calinago Territory. <laughs> okay. Um, now, now, what are the specific documents, though, that our Canada applicants need to present uh, to the bank to access the funds? 
Okay, so let us take, for example, someone is going to agriculture or fisheries project. Mm -hmm. We would require the normal um, KYC documentation, like your ID or proof of address, um, a bank statement. No, no, what? I mean, what's KYC? KYC, what is well, a KYC documentation? Yeah. Yeah. Know your customer. Yeah. So know That's your customer. Good, yeah. As we say, any relationship you're getting into, you need to know the person. So similarly, bank needs to know the customer. Mm -hmm. So we want to, to ask them for their, their ID, their proof of address, um, for an agricultural project, for example, from the agricultural extension officer, a letter from the Kalinago Village Council very verifying Kalinago ancestry, and a letter from the Kalinago Council certifying land ownership if the person owns land, mm -hmm. and a secured arrangement. And that's it, simple as that? Simple as that. Simple as so that. it's proof of what it is, whatever it is, whatever business you're getting involved in, and you must um, ensure that you are Kalinago. Now, the aid bank has developed a, a structure uh, to administer and disperse the funds both to small businesses and to the Kalinago people. Mm -hmm. uh, be activated. And the other part of my question is, um, can interested persons begin to submit the applications of this coming week? Certainly, um, Honorable PM. So the, the application process can begin on Monday. Um, the aid bank, as you would know, has been involved in the disbursement of COVID lines, and that has really allowed us to streamline our processes. Mm -hmm. And so um, applications via telephone, so we could call telephone number 255 248-2853, 255-9444, 255-9467. And there will also be an, an email that we could email us for these two two lines in particular, loans at aidbank.com. So that will be available from Monday. Sure. So if it's an MSME loan, if it's a Kalinago loan, you could just email us at, um, at the address. And, and so the aid bank has put in a structure in place? Definitely. To, to, Definitely. to let things go smoothly? Definitely. Yeah, and our right. protocols, obviously, are, are, are strictly observed. Sure. Okay. Now, I, I've tried to keep the question very simple. Um, and, and based on what I've been getting from the public, what they would like to know about this, this facility. Uh, are there any other questions, any other matters like to bring to the attention of the public in respect to these two facilities? Um, just, just to say, I think we are one of the only banks on island who do interviews and there's no face-to-face. -face. So for example, you could do WhatsApp, you could do uh, to the bank, and if you come in, you sit in an office by yourself and we do the interviews yeah. via the phone. So you come into a nice comfortable setting and you have your social distance to face interaction. So I think that's a first for, for us in Dominica, making sure that yeah. we um, that we are. No, uh, one of the questions from, from Facebook is the issue of refinancing, uh, where the small business is concerned. Can people refinance with the small business funds? No, it's not allowed on it's this allowed. facility. No. Yeah, so it is, it is to capitalize That's correct. A, a new or existing business, that is but correct. not to pay debts from other banks or something. No, definitely. And, and that's the nature of developing banking. We, we try not to do the issue of refinancing. Okay, but um, thank you very much, um, mm -hmm. Ms. Johnson. I wish you all the best and the staff and mm -hmm. hopefully. And I also want to say to the, to the, to the prospective applicants, uh, we have to follow the rules, you know. There are documents you need to have. Make sure you have all the documents before you go to the bank, you know, and, and, and so that when you go there, you have a full, um, a full dossier of documents and so forth. And take just what you need. Don't take every pay. You have to pay it back. So take just what you need. It's a $27 million um, for the small business facility. Okay? So thank you again, and I wish the bank well. So as the GM has said, from Monday, you can start sending your applications, and you can get $8,100 minimum mm -hmm. and a maximum of $675,000 um, um, for your business and the opportunity to even go beyond the 675 based on the, your business model and, of course, the documents. Okay, That's thank good. you. All the best. Thank, thank you, you Tim, for having me. To this program by the Minister for the Environment, Rural Modernization, Upliftment, Honorable Kozier Frederick, we will speak about the importance of the Canalago Development Fund launched on Wednesday of this week and how this new facility will be used from the lives of the Canalago Territory 
and of course the Carnival people. Honorable Frederick, good evening and welcome to Anupali. It's, it's, it's only the first time, you, you, your time second time here, right? Second time here. Welcome, please. Um, I'm happy to be here, PM. I'm happy to be, to be part and parcel of the Liberal Party government and to represent the, the Carnival people. An exciting time to be a member of parliament for the, for the side of your constituency. <laughs> so many things happening there. Now, the Carnival Development Fund was launched on Wednesday as a means of increased access to financing for the Carnival people. Uh, first of all, uh, what does this mean to you as a Carnival brother and the representative of the Carnival territory? Um, PM, this, this is a victory for me personally. <coughs> it's a victory because, because as a duly elected member of, of parliament for the Carnival community, I'm excited to be part and parcel of the government who cares. Mm. And, um, and this was an election promise. Mm. And I'm, I'm so very happy that um, the government can have assisted me in, in making that come to, to reality. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for this. And so access to financing has always been an issue in the Canago space. And it has been a struggle. And this struggle is one that, that, that was the summer as Canago chief mm. and, 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 and all of my previous um, parliamentary representatives. So I'm excited. It's a, it's a real victory for the Canago people. Excellent. Now, how do, how do the Canago people uh, stand to benefit from the establishment of the Canago Development Fund? BM, the, the folks in the Canago space will, have, will, will finally have access to finance. Without, without the rigors of, of, um, of, of providing collateral. And, and so, so they will be able to, to, to um, develop their own enterprises. And as a matter of fact, PM, uh, the folks within Carnival Territory have been very progressive. They have taken loans, small loans, mm -hmm. from commercial banks, even the fast edge and, and the, the, the fast car loan financing that, that exists, and they take them at very high interest rates. Mm -hmm. So just, just, just imagine that they can now have a facility to, 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 to get finance for just 2%. So they're very excited. So we have to, to assert ourselves more and, and to develop enterprises and that they have envisioned in, in making themselves really, really um, and powerful and independent. Now, now from your assessment um, of the needs of the Carnival people, uh, which areas do you think will attract uh, greatest investment um, using funds from the facility? I, I and, and in other words, what are the most pressing needs of the Carnival people? that this fund will address? I think, the, um, looking, at, looking at the kind of even after Hurricane Maria and even before that, realize that housing is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, we also look at um, pension and business development and also education. Um, I'm so excited, the of homes, through that facility, the expansion of homes because families are uh, growing in the Carnival mm -hmm. space, and also small renovations to existing structures. Um, <laughs> and quite different, or is an added value to what's, what's been happening from, from the government intervention mm -hmm. on the whole. And so we will also see small and new enterprises mm. um, and upgrading of established um, enterprises. And, and not only this PM, we do have other aspects. Um, so we, we have agriculture, the fisheries, um, equipment, and even medical services that can be acquired from Quite that up. facility. Now, what are the Calico people telling you about the launch of the development fund? Are, are they eagerly looking forward to accessing these funds? <laughs> PM, many Calico people have reached out to me. Mm -hmm. Many have reached out. And those, uh, I, I will speak to those who reach out to me personally, mm. um, via the telephone, via WhatsApp, via Facebook. They're very eager. Mm. I know there are many more who are on the sidelines and waiting and watching. But those who have reached out to me, they're very eager. And they have all been very positive. Um, they reach out, they, they, want, they want to see clarity on the use, um, what are the administrative procedures, what types of business they, they could go to. And they are very, very excited because it's the first time in the history of the Canago space that that finance can be re readily be made available with um, almost no, no, no additional ties in terms of collateral. Now, how does this launch of the KDF fall in line with your overall development plan for the Canago Territory? And, and what other plans are in development to, to further enhance the lives of your people? Now, PM, the, the, the launch is, is sort of the, the perfect solution for personal development. Um, because within the Carnival space, we realize that most of the interventions done over the years have been a government interventions. So now we have the ability to have a personal development. And, but also, it, it will work in, in, in tandem or in, in parallel with the government's program. And so this will help make us more assertive and, and, and more, more progressive. And the other project we, we speak about as, as we have this conversation is we're looking at the Carnival space as a World Heritage Site for the UN, for UNESCO to continue to develop the, the Carnival space as a, a premier tourism site 
and also to rebrand the arts and craft and, and the cultural heritage of that, that space. So these are some of th those things that stand out apart from all of the other trappings of development that normally come through the, the general um, government thrust for development. Now, now, the facilities available to people in, the, in arts and craft, which you mentioned, the arts and craft industry, which, is, which, which really symbolizes the, the Kyanago people mm -hmm. and their existence. Um, and they use that craft to pilot trade to tourists, and that's how they get, they, they, they get their income. Yeah, is there a plan to encourage Kyanago residents uh, to return, uh, I'm hoping in large numbers, uh, to, to traditional craft making? Uh, to take advantage of the increase in visitor arrivals, especially in a post-COVID uh, period? ASPM, there's, there's a plan. And, mm. and the plan is very structured. It's one that we want to encourage folks to come back in to, to appreciate and understand the importance of uh, this sort of um, what we call cultural heritage and cultural artifacts that we can continue to build. And also to continue to learn and, and, pro and produce. But more importantly, to also to participate in, in a rebranding of, of, the, of the craft. because. Uh, as we speak, the, the, the craft is, is sold within, within the Canago space at some outlets uh, in and around Rosa for the cruise ships, but we want to make it a, a, a more viable industry. And so workshops will, will be organized in, in tandem with the, with the Aid Bank and, 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 and the Ministry of Tourism, so the Small Business um, Enterprise um, Division there to ensure that there's continuous training. And, and so the plan is one that involves not only Canago affairs or Canago upliftment, but various line ministries and also people in, in the private sector who have interest in, in that development. We have done some work previously with, with Dexia, mm -hmm. so we'll continue that work to ensure that um, the craft in itself, as a unique piece to the, of the Karanago people, can continue to grow and, and provide a viable livelihoods for, for the folks there. Sure. Now, how, how do the people in, in the Karanago territory uh, find support if they need to, ac to access assistance, really, to uh, access the facility? Um, are you putting in, in, in place a structure, the ministry, to facilitate uh, the process? Yes, I mean, the, the, this, this, this um, initiative is sort of a baby of the ministry itself, mm. and with a lot of um, committee involvement. So we, we, are, we are putting in place a, a structure, uh, a sort of um, committee structure that will help guide, guide folks. The, the ministry's office is open to the public to come in and, and clarify situations. But also we will we'll work in tandem with, with the, um, the aid bank to ensure that uh, there's this smooth um, a transition of, of, of business ideas and, and development. So we will take some serious leadership at our office in, in the Kyanago space and in Roseau to ensure that um, the right people get, get access to and also they, uh, they're guided by uh, the rules of, of that governs that, that facility. Because it is something that, is, that, is, that, is, um, that, is, that helps to develop our people, but first we have to ensure that we can, uh, for some time, hold, hold a hand mm -hmm. and yeah, to ensure sure. that they could get the best benefits um, within that, within that, that um, enterprise. Now, the fund, we, we're starting the fund with, with 860,000 now, 60, um, and there's a commitment to capitalize it every year with a minimum of $1 million. Um, so, so there'll be, it's a revolving fund, yes. so there'll always be funds available. Um, any final words, uh, Kosia? Uh, I just want to say, BMI, I'm very humble, huh? mm -hmm. very, very humble to serve my people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you as a PM who, who, who sought, sought me out and, 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 and so I could represent. And I, I'm also happy for, for the people in the Kanago space who, who saw the fifth in me. And uh, although I, I, like we know I have some rough edges, but <laughs> I really do learn to do that. And I, but I really want to encourage folks to, to, um, to, to, to make use of that 860,000. Because as a matter of fact, PM, it will appear to us that we are only at three more months. So it means really we have three months or the last financial three months in the, in the financial year to use up eight sixty, yeah. and so that's encouraging for me as 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 yeah. as, a, as the pal rep, and to know of the commitment by yourself to give an, an additional million dollars to to in, in every in every annual cycle of our budget, but to say also PM that um, we will continue to work with the KDF and the aid bank and, and your office to ensure that we can sustain that that um, that facility looking at funding from international agencies, um, so special government projects. Uh, we, also, we will also eventually look at taking our own loans mm. to, to, to maximize it. Because I think the Canada people are so excited that they, they are now willing to take more risks than ever. Mm. Because they know they have the strong backing of the government with your leadership and, and the work that I can do with them to ensure that um, the space can continue to grow and we are able to, to build commerce. So it is, the, it is the first sort of baby step in, in the right direction to to be in commerce and enterprise in the Kanago space. 
and definitely it will help to shape um, the socio-economic condition of the modern Kalinago. And, and as I understand it, um, you said to me that you are putting in place a schedule jointly with the aid bank to go into the Kalinago territory in every community That's right. to sensitize the public That's on this. When do we expect to, to um, commence? Uh, we, we want to start next week. Next week. And, and people have been calling out. We know we work within the constructs of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And it will take various forms, face-to-face, um, -face and some Zoom meetings. And, and, and sometimes it, it's, always, it's always easier to go to some of the homes also, PM. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I also, encourage people, yeah. and encourage people. It's always important because I think that as soon as we, we look out of the box and we could, we could identify business ideas that people themselves may not be aware of. And so we want to assist them on that. And that's what I want to do as, as a PAL rep. And, and the kind of brief to ensure we can get the best benefits for, from, mm -hmm. from this wonderful you know, initiative that you, you have yeah, you sure. me to lead. Sure. Well, you have my support, and of course, the Kalago people will always continue to have my, my support. My, my support as a student of history, I understand the plight of the Kalago people and the indigenous people across the world. I spent some time studying this uh, as a student of history. Uh, and so I'm very, very happy that we have been able to, to finally launch this facility. And it's interesting that um, Piers Burton mentioned that. Um, Ghana Joseph had indicated, let us start the fund with no money, you know? Uh, but we started at 860, and it is going to be capitalized, and, and that's important that it's going to be with us for, for eternity. I, 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 can, I can give that assurance. Sir. So thank you, um, Kozia, all the thank best. You. And um, I'm here at your disposal and disposal of the Canada people. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs>
resource mobilization strategy to raise the funding required to drive economic recovery, the economic recovery program within the Caribbean community. Heads of government also noted that the implementation of the CSME was a matter of urgency to position the region to respond to our current development challenges. An action plan for an effective CSME and immediate action to hasten implementation was endorsed at the meeting. The CARICOM Heads meeting, I believe, came at an opportune time. Just as the world begins to contend with the fallout of this Russia-Ukraine war, we now have to consider the ripple effects on small island economies like ours. So no matter how far Russia and Ukraine are from us, it will be impacting us here in the Caribbean. And so the heads of government, the heads of state of the Caribbean community, took the most prudent position at the meeting to strongly condemn the military attacks and invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. At the end of the meeting, heads again called for an immediate ceasefire and end to all acts of aggression and the urgent withdrawal of Russian military forces in Ukraine. We reaffirmed the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter and call for respect for the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. Leaders also lamented the extent of the loss of civilian life as the crisis wages on, including women and children, which has caused a growing humanitarian crisis. And as an urgent concern for us here in the region, we acknowledged that the military confrontation taking place in Europe could have repercussions on our small developing states. I am certain you have taken note of the rising gas prices, which have shot up to over $126 per barrel on the world market. Soon, of course, already, we are, we are seeing the effects of the war reflected on food prices and other commodities. This inflation is sure to worsen the already devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on commodity prices worldwide. Supply chains which have already been disrupted will be further handicapped and the spillover effects will be felt here in Dominica and indeed the Caribbean. Disrupted trade routes and rising transportation costs are likely to place additional pressure on our growth prospects. Commodity importers will have to cope with sharp price increases on goods and will have no choice but to pass this on to consumers. In the end, we are all affected. How do we respond as a small economy already beset with so many setbacks over the past 10 years? One of the issues up for deliberation at the CARICOM Heads meeting was the need to modernize current production methods to promote food security and reduce the region's food import bill by 25% by 2025. Leaders also urged on the emphasis on human resource development, including youth involvement. Of course, food security takes on even greater prominence in times of global conflict. Here in Dominica, we have laid the groundwork to hit the road running in this regard. Following the devastation of Hurricane Maria, we made extensive investments in rebuilding the agricultural sector and providing farmers with the tools they needed to rebuild their livelihoods. This work continues, and I will speak more at length of these interventions at another time. But I wish to touch briefly on the focus will be given to innovations in agriculture over the next few weeks. We have listened to your concerns over time, and we want to introduce measures to address issues faced along the supply chain by our farmers, producers, fisher folk, restaurants, hoteliers, and indeed supermarkets. How do we coordinate our efforts to ensure the market is efficiently served and at every point? there is financial benefit for everyone involved in the process. The major players must have a common understanding of the flow of goods and services to maximize customer value and gain a competitive advantage in the marketplace. 
By streamlining our operations, we can cut excess costs, avoid supply shortages, and increase profits. In this same vein, we must also consider how we can tap into the cultivation of niche agricultural products. We often hear complaints of expensive retail prices for high-value vegetables and fruits at our local supermarkets. These products are generally imported for local resale and consumption. The government is often blamed for this shortcoming. But the retailers tell us these products cannot be obtained on the local market at the right quantities or price. The question, therefore, is how do we fix this? Over the next weeks, this government will make a proposal to young farmers and agriculturists to get involved in a venture where they will be provided with state funds and other support to cultivate these high value crops on a large scale. I speak here of cantaloupes, um, bell peppers, both red and yellow. I speak of broccoli, cauliflower, eggplants, and other such produce which fetch exorbitant prices at our supermarkets. I promise to share the details of this with the public at a later date. In fact, my first stop on this, I believe, is in the Talking Point program at 9.30 tomorrow morning with Ivana John Baptist. But before we formalize any of our plans, I want to meet with the people who work in the agro-processing, retail, service, and agricultural sectors. A series of consultations will be held with the relevant people to hear their ideas and recommendations as we move ahead with plans to boost the agricultural sector. Initiatives such as these, I, I am confident, will help us create the buffers that are needed as we experience the adverse effects of climate change, a global pandemic, and now a war in Europe. On the lighter side of things, on Saturday, I spend the better part of the day engaged with the youth parliamentarians ahead of the youth parliament, which will be held later this month. What a wonderful time we had sharing ideas on their various platforms and the do's and don'ts of parliamentary procedure. These young people are showing such wonderful promise and leadership potential. I feel a great sense of responsibility to help mold and mentor them to take on even more prominent roles in the leadership of our country. I look forward to the presentations of the youth parliament, but more so to the long-term contributions I know they are capable of making to the development of Dominica. I encourage you to support them in this endeavor on March 23 and 24, when the youth parliament will be held at the House of Assembly. I wish you all the best. Thanks for being with me this Sunday. Let us go forth and serve our God and country and be as diligent as we ought to be. Um, just on a, a lighter side, or even a, even a more lighter side, um, if you like my tie, my tie was selected by my daughter. She's six years old. And so every time I have to wear a tie, she's the one who selects the tie. So anytime you see me in public with a tie, just know it's my six-year-old daughter who, who selects the tie for me. And if she says this one, and I must wear this one, even if it doesn't match sometimes, you know? Uh, so I want to thank um, Bella for selecting my tie, which I think matches to today. Um, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Sleep well. Thank you very much. <laughs>